Welcome to the Young Crones Cafe, where you can get a magic brew full of all sorts of information, both witchy and practical. Grab a cup and join us. I'm Elizabeth, a wordsmith. And I'm Sue, a visual artist. We are going to talk about various witchcraft and life topics from a slightly more mature perspective, at least most of the time. Thanks so much for joining us. On the Path, which is the name for our personal witchcraft practices, we have spent a great deal of time discussing what we believe and why. These conversations led to the writing of a book full of information about our tradition. We call these thoughts kernels because they are the start of much bigger ideas. We thought we'd share some of these with you, so... Today's metaphysical kernel of thought is witch and witchcraft definitions. Throughout history, there have been those who practiced magic for whatever purposes they chose. Just like there were people who chose to help, there were those who chose to harm or take care of problems for others. People have often been irrationally afraid of the concept of the word witch. In fact, the dictionary reinforces the stereotype of someone evil or bound to do harm. Merriam-Webster defines the word witch as a person, especially a woman, who is credited with having unusually malignant supernatural powers, or as a hag or a crone. To give them credit, the dictionary people also have stuck in a practitioner of witchcraft, especially in adherence with a neo-pagan tradition or religion. However, the damage continues when defining what a witch actually is for most people, especially when you think about the green evil wicked witch of the West from the Wizard of Oz movie, or any other cartoon which you may encounter, think Snow White and blame Disney here. And don't get us started on their definition of magic, which discusses the use of supernatural powers over natural forces. We could go on a real rant here, but this is a good point to say that those of us on the path practice witchcraft and identify ourselves as modern and get traditional witches. For us, the practice of witchcraft is using ritual and or magic for spiritual growth and change, so it is a spiritual practice. It is also a religion because it is a way for us to connect with the external, transformative, transcendent, and divine. It can also be seen as the study and practice of working with elemental and universal energies with intent to affect change and growth in yourself and the world in which you live. Being a witch is a personal choice and so is what you choose to call your practice. So as you can see, we have come up with our own definition of what a witch is, and definitely what a witch isn't, as well as the practice of witchcraft. And I think it's very different than when we first came around. I think our definition continues to evolve. As well. Oh, absolutely, yes. Yeah. I mean, you and I could go on a rant about cartoon witches <laughs> Witches. In fact, I have a grandchild. I mean, my grandchildren know that grandma's a witch. And when she was about seven, she informed me very seriously, I couldn't be a witch because I wasn't green. But hey, I'm a there's a certain logic to that. There is, but it's what people are exposed to. Yes. And the fact that Miriam Webster seems to start out with a hideously negative definition of witchcraft is malignant superpowers. I didn't know you and I had malignant superpowers. Hmm. Wait a minute. I didn't know I had superpowers. <laughs> well, if I had malignant superpowers, there'd probably be some, you know, burned out cars on the side. Oh, no, there oh. would be carnage. Oh, yeah. Definite carnage. <laughs> you know, you can see it in the superhero movie. Blast here, oh, blast funny. Oh, yeah. Really? Come on. I mean, realistically, you just, if, if you, if you, you think are. about it, in in the bigger picture of schemes of things, fifty years ago, man, what a different time for witches! It is it is a renaissance of thought that we are going through to a certain extent with all the other tomfoolery and w weird stuff, and but. It is a better time to be a witch than in other periods of 
Oh, yeah, I'd agree. Oh, with that. <laughs> I would agree with that sentiment. And when you think about it, because time does pass on us, Gardner came in the 50s, so we're approaching 70 years ago, even, wow. where it was no longer illegal to practice witchcraft in England. Yes, exactly. Killed the witchcraft law. And when you think about it, those those laws or the more modern laws in England were actually more having to do with fortune tellers and various other yes. quote unquote charlatans. Than oh, absolutely. Yeah, Garth there's uh, started. Uh, Susanna Budapest in California. I remember uh, her book, The Holy Book of women's mysteries it's one of my my very first books that opened my eyes to witchcraft and and claiming that as as your that a powerful birthright and with that you're defining yourself that you have that power to define yourself your beliefs your practices you know and that you and unlike Budapest, as you said, you don't have to be female. Correct. <laughs> you know, they, there seemed to be a division somewhere along the line in the earlier witchcraft slash pagan slash whatever you want to call it community, where you had the more traditional forms with Gardnerian, where you had a mix of male and female and high priest and high priestess and the women's evolutionary practices, as it were, like the Dianic and so on that mm -hmm. kind of came to being with the women well, with, the, with the women's movements in the era yeah exactly things yeah. have changed slowly and i kind of like our own evolution that it's just energy and it's not necessarily masculine and feminine with all of the supposed traits that yes. are one or the other i think we're we have been, you and I anyway have evolved beyond thinking of if people have to be binary, they're either this or this, or they are same sex or whatever. And it's really more of, I like to think we're evolving to the point where it's just personality characteristics for want of a better word, rather than specifically masculine or feminine, et cetera. And I like our definition of witchcraft nowadays, where we're basically working with natural energies and it's got nothing mm -hmm. to do with supernatural. <laughs> it's what's there and it's always been there. And I like to think we're not the only ones who figured that out. Correct. And I, I'm, I'm not going to do the quote right, but there is, you know, for any person anything that exists beyond the realm of their science is considered magic because it can't be explained yeah well i think that's not necessarily accurate because you can explain a lot of the basics of magic nowadays what we you know any when you think about it thousands of years ago the fact that the sun came up was magic no so, that's what i'm saying exactly but that, even, the practice of magic as we do it a lot of it when you think about it there is a basis in natural science nowadays nowadays absolutely yes and that, and that we can look at it in terms of if i use energy in this particular way mm -hmm. i'm going to get a result and a lot of the times when you think about the practice of magic and spell work it is almost like doing a scientific experiment. If I put this stuff together in this particular way, mm -hmm. I, you know, is this the result I am going to get? With and this intention. Intention, and it's almost like a hypothesis. If I do this this way, will I get this? And we do, and, and it works. And I think that's where the belief and faith in magic is important too, is you, it's where it, diverges for us from the strictly scientific because i do know people who use magic as a science in yes. that sense, and they just do spell work and for us witchcraft has become in essence our religion because it does allow us to connect with what we call the divine both internal and external correct and there's there is a a soul component of 
fulfillment that goes beyond just um, results of a spell. Exactly. Of a spell. Mm -hmm. Exactly. But that that those results, those positive results, I think that's why witchcraft is a practice. It's something you have to do. Mm -hmm. You have to experience ritual and feel the changes that happen when you get into ritual space. You have to do spell work and have things work out. Not yes. always, but you go into it with the intention that it's going to and have it work out. And when it does, it increases your faith that this is a, something real. You know, Absolutely. It, it creates the reality of a practice. Well, when you have it's ex ex experiential in that in the way exactly and when you have put in that amount of time you start seeing there's always results they may not be what you expected and sometimes they're further reaching all right a lot of times they're further reaching than you expect mm -hmm. but being able to have that sense of time in seeing you know intention and then product to be able to then try different things but always know it's working you're right every everything that you do reinforces your faith i think so and i think that's why witchcraft is a religion that is coming into its own nowadays because we recognize that it's real for a lot of people and it's becoming more I don't want to say socially acceptable because I don't think it's ever going to reach the point of everybody believes in magic because that's just not how the world works but more and more people are going to become hopeful always more accepting of it works for you so go ahead as opposed to right. trying to convince you that their way is better or that what you're doing isn't real. Well, there's a, there's a difference between being accepting and being anti, you know, you, there are, there are some people that when they, when they decide to leave what's considered an organized religion or something, it's almost a rebound and then they are angry and i've met my share of of angry ex-christian pagans oh please <laughs> we all have but you have to realize too that there's a reason for that sometimes when you think oh about absolutely it. You know, they they have they have been in a way rejected for being who they are for whatever reason in that mainstream mm or how they think about things is constantly told it's not correct yeah that or, is, it's hard to take yeah it is and then there are having that freedom and a lot of people when they come into witchcraft when you think about it they need rules and there aren't any rules per se in witchcraft you have been programmed for want of a better word that there is a book somewhere that tells you how to do this stuff how to do it the right way to do it the right way exactly yeah and caught up in a tradition or a particular way of doing something that you learn when you first get here and you're stuck with it and they can't get past that and i think mm -hmm. everybody goes through that at least a little bit because as a society in general they're very big we're big on roles we have laws we have ways of mm -hmm. interacting with each other even you know driving on the road with a certain amount of courtesy you know there's <laughs> these interactions that go on that whether there's norms that are established right. for mm -hmm. society and witchcraft allows you to step outside the norms and that can be scary as hell when you think about it oh absolutely exhilarating the freedom and scary <laughs> and terrifying let's be honest like yeah. there's too many choices yeah and as a society, we are conditioned that there's either two choices. There's society's way, which enough people have decided is the right way, or there's the wrong way. And right. in craft, there aren't any of those boundaries or barriers. And learning to live with that and recognize that as you practice, 
the tradition that you may have started out in may not be enough anymore, which is one of the reasons.